Okay, so now we're going to be talking about um, a very important topic in terms of the OCHEM on the MCAT, which is acidity. So a lot of times they'll just have you, um, ask you, they'll, they'll give you a bunch of different molecules and say which one's the most acidic, which one's the most basic, which one's the least acidic, stuff like that. Right? So something that is more stable of a conjugate base is going to mean that it's going to be more acidic. So a strong acid has a weak conjugate base. Right? Um, so for example, let's say uh, we have um, this alcohol right here. Um, its conjugate base is going to be um, minus the, the hydrogen right there. So a more stable conjugate base will make this acid um, stronger. All right. So now we're going to look at trends in terms of acidity. All right. So all that I have listed right here are trends that will increase acidity. That way it will be easier for you to memorize. All right. So if something has resonance, if, if a molecule has resonance um, in terms of its conjugate base, uh, that will in turn increase the acidity of the molecule. For example, if we have this phenol over here and this alcohol, right? Uh, when we make the conjugate base, we're going to remove the H's and then we'll have a minus charge on the O, right? That, those electrons on the O can, in, in the phenol, be resonated in. So for example, that's our conjugate base. We have these electrons that come down and these that pop up, right? So what we're going to see is we're going to have this and then we have this double bond O and these electrons can go on to uh, resonate into all these different other parts right so increase in resonance is going to increase the acidity if we see in this alcohol there is no resonance structure um, it's just a basic alcohol it's not going to have any the electrons will not be able to move anywhere therefore the phenol is going to be more acidic than the alcohol right so let's just have that in mind um, and then for example having a positive charge will generally mean that it's going to be more acidic. And the example that will are very common is OH minus H2O and H3O plus. Right? OH minus is obviously a base. Right? It's, a, it's a very, very strong base. H2O, neutral. H3O plus, strong acid. Therefore, if we see this, there's a general trend in general terms. More positive charge means more acidic. And obviously you can't this is one that's a, a little bit less reliable because there's obviously a lot of examples that that's not the case. Um, but it is a general trend that does, that, that does work that you can, can count on. Right? Inductive effect, if you have a very electronegative atom um, near that particular um, hydrogen that you're probably measuring its acidity of, um, or even as a whole molecule on its own, um, having more electronegative atoms um, around it is going to increase the acidity. So, for example, all those halogens uh, are fairly acidic. Um, um, putting a bunch of F's on a, on a molecule, and, and I mean by F's as in fluorines, is going to increase the acidity. Right? So, for example, if we had this molecule right here versus this, then it's going to increase the acidity. Right? And now, going right on the periodic table. Right? So, what that means is if we have for example, going right as in CH4, um, NH3, and also we're going to have um, H2O. You know, the, all those are C, N, and O. They're right next to each other on the periodic table, going from left at C, and O is on the right. Um, we're going to increase in the city. So that's our general trend. Going on the periodic table, if we see a, uh, something going to the right, more on the right side means more um, acidic. So it's good to have these trends down. It's good to have those trends um, when they give you molecules that you've never seen before. Uh, but the problem with that is those trends are somewhat can be somewhat difficult because sometimes they're fairly close or sometimes these molecules are completely different. If we're comparing carboxylic acid um, and this ketone, well, I don't really know anymore. Is it going right on the periodic table? Is that even going to help us um, increase the um, charge or inductive effect or resonance? It's kind of hard to tell. That's why for these general molecules like this, you have to just memorize them. You have to memorize them like this, but if they give you two ketones, but one has fluorines on it like we saw before, okay, then that's when you can use the trends. But in the general sense, we will have to just memorize this basic trend right here, which is carboxylic acid is the most acidic for the MCAT. There's obviously more acidic um, in terms of other molecules. Uh, but for the MCAT, carboxylic acid, then phenol, then alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, alkyne, alkene, and then a basic alkane. 
okay? So those are our strengths of acids, um, you know, the, the strengths of the acidity of molecules. So we'll have to just memorize these. And knowing the pKa's is very helpful for this. Um, for these molecules, if we, if we just memorize the pKa's, it'll help us a lot, especially in future problems like with extraction and stuff like that. It'll be very useful. Um, but the one thing we also have to memorize in addition to this are the actual strong base and strong acid list. Okay? These are just something that we have to know. So all these are not strong acids. Okay? They are not considered strong acids. Only thing that are strong acids are these that are listed up here. And the only thing that are strong bases are these listed here. This is the order of weak acids. Okay? These are considered weak acids. Even though they may appear strong to us, um, they're actually not. You know, even though I've ordered them in this way, um, this could be acetic acid, which is just vinegar. So it's not very strong at all. Okay? So what I have down below here are a list of weak acids, and what I have listed up here are a list of strong acids. Okay? So just to go over them very quickly, um, H2SO4, HNO3, HI, HBr, HCl, and HCl4. Just memorize those, all strong acids. Strong bases, um, this one they don't really test that much, so that's why I like to just say group 1 and group 2 hydroxides. So anything like um, NaOH, that, that's a group 1 hydroxide. Uh, but the problem with that is that not every single group 1 and 2 hydroxides are actually strong bases. Um, so if you can, I would memorize the actual ones that are. Um, but if not, it would be perfectly fine to just make the general um, assumption that group 1 and group 2 hydroxides are going to be strong bases. Because it's very unlikely that on the MCAT they're, they're actually going to ask you, you know, what, they're going to put one of the other group 2 hydroxides and ask you, oh, is that a, a strong base? I mean, they could, but very unlikely it's not really worth your time to memorize. Right? So just have these kind of basic trends down, memorize this basic list, and kind of have those uh, acidity trends that we showed before with resonance and positive charge, inductive effect stuff like that. Um, but this is really where you'll get your points. You know, having this memorized right here, this entire page, um, it'll help you a lot.